Hello everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome one and all. Did I just see what I think I saw going through that pool? This is gonna be my favorite room in the entire hotel! So anyway, with Burgundy gone, now that she is hooked up with Cavaricci and they are more than welcome to be very happy with each other until the end of time, the we still now have her dress sitting around here in the back. Hey look, Burgundy left her dress hanging backstage just said that. Well, let's grab it. Looks like Burgundy won't be needing this again, since she now has access to an unlimited supply of Marine Corps fatigues. All right, and our next step is obvious. We need to go see Chablis down in the makeup studio because she needed a dress more than anything else in the entire world, and we are more than happy to give it to her. Oh, Chablis, I hope you love this gown. I really think it's you. Oh, Larry. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, you little devil. Whatever can I do to repay you? Here's an itemized list. Why don't you meet me tonight down at the beach? And we'll take a midnight swim together. Just the two of us alone in the moonlight. What do you say? Chablis, you hopeless romantic. Yes, a thousand I times say, yes. I uh, say, <laughs> I'll be there. Until tonight, Chablis. Fast forward to tonight, I'm guessing. Unless the game crashed again. Uh. I. Oh, we're good. Chablis looks beautiful here on the beach in the moonlight, with those waves softly licking the shore. Neil, stop it. There's nothing like a campfire on the beach, under the stars, in the moonlight, to set a romantic Neil, mood. Neil, stop making love to my ears. Unless it's sharing a blanket with a creature of incredible beauty who's ready and willing to satisfy your every whim. In other words, leave the fire alone, Larry, and concentrate <laughs> on Chablis. <laughs> Sorry. Concentrate on Chablis. Do you mean the wine? That's probably, that's probably champagne. Hi, Larry. I've been waiting for you. I brought a little something for us. Champagne. Chilled. With two glasses. I would hope so, because there are two of us, Shibli. Thank you very much for using common sense. Hi, Larry. I okay. brought a... Alright, fine. Well, I guess that's my cue to start in on the Dom Perignon. Chablis here, in the moonlight beside a warm campfire, sitting on her blanket alone on the beach. Are you saying stop looking at the mood. champagne and get back to and it? You're thinking about drinking? Yes. God, yes. Chablis here. I, I, come on, do you want me to pour the wine or not? Chablis. Fine, all right. I can't talk to her anymore. I guess I just go right for the action. Oh, Larry, I like that. I like it when you place your hand on my arm and then pull it back without moving. Delicious. Can I stroke the fire lovingly? Let's just say you did stick your hand in the fire, and the fire was hot, and you burned yourself, and you ran to the ocean to cool it, and a shark bit your hand and wouldn't let go, and you were dragged out to sea and you drowned. Then would you be happy? Actually, yes. That would be a really good scene. Did you guys want to bother animating that? All right. Touch, 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 touch. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, Larry, that's so nice. No, uh, how do I move things along? Chablis here. All right, I can't oh. talk to her. I can't touch her anymore. Oh, I can't. Have I ever told you I find your eyes exciting? No, but please do. Uh, well, uh, I find your eyes exciting. Yeah. Oh, Great follow-up, Larry. You do. Ah, uh, Chablis, would it be premature to request a little kiss? Take me, big boy. Whoa! All right, Larry, there you go. Happily ever e Uh, that was... Uh, that ended abruptly. Ah, uh, Chablis, take me. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. A little bit more. And let's just keep it going. We're on a roll. Oh, man, Chablis. I've kissed quite a few women in my time, but I've never experienced anything quite like that. Mary, perhaps you finally found someone who really knows what a man wants. See, this is one of those instances where I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm waiting for the game to tell me why I'm doing it. But 
or at least to prompt me to do it. Anyway, well, the reason you got the turn down service is you got yourself a condom, an unwrapped condom, because you do practice safely, after all, and it also makes a darling little hat. Ooh, I was hoping you brought one of those. Here, let me have it. You gonna put it on me? Is that what's happening here? I'm ready when you are. Uh, sorry, Larry. Is this not what you wanted? Is this not what you expected? Larry, she, she's right there. You're being really rude. You're being very insulting to your guests. No wonder Shibli knows what a man likes. You don't know what phase she's in. There you go. See, now just take it. There you go. You started this. Don't start nothing you can't finish, Larry. <laughs> the next morning. Uh, at least the water is nice and clear for this. Larry, you're washing out your mouth, but I think that's the last of your problems right about now. And as the bed whirs away in the distance, let's go back down and get that uh, champagne that uh, was left behind. It's probably all warm by now. Larry, I believe, is fairly pansexual. I mean, he's a cis male all the way through and through, but he's open to new experiences, Larry. Now, I'm not sure if out of desperation or just out of, well, desperation, probably. There we go. Something to remember our encounter by. Like you always say, a little warm champagne never hurt anyone. Besides, I earned this. <laughs> By taking it up the butt. I do legitimately forget how to fix the cellulite drain salon, the pipe in there. So we'll just do what I know we can do here uh, and get to the pool. Now, the, the pool is probably one of my least favorite puzzles in the entire game. So look, we have to get out here. We can go swimming all we want, but we don't have a swimsuit. So if you try swimming, saving. You're still wearing your leisure suit, but what the hell, right? Yeah, YOLO, Larry. The sodden leisure suit starts to pull you under the surface. Horrors. As you go down for the third time, your vision fills with the image of a thousand leisure suit manufacturers lifeguard? burning in hell. There's a lifeguard right there. He can save this you. This is You're... not my idea of going down. You're fine. There's a guy. You're right... getting too old to swim in your leisure suit. Since you neglected to bring proper swimwear with you, perhaps you'll just have to create your own. Uh, uh, Mr. Lifeguard, can we just please have a chat about your business acumen? Are you on break or something? No. I just died. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer, <laughs> I'd like to go swimming here. It looks like you need a swimsuit first there, uh, Larry Larry. Yeah, baby. But feel free to change clothes in our exclusive European uh, changing bushes. They're right <laughs> over there on the other side. European Ooh. changing bushes. Love it. All right. Uh, yes, indeed. We do need a swimsuit. So there are no swimsuits to buy, though I think La Costalada is letting a perfectly good business opportunity slip through their fingers by not having like a gift shop where you can buy swimsuits and wine and silver bracelets, you know, whatever, whatever you need. I really think they should, yeah, clear out that drainage salon and open up a gift shop, guys. You could, mm, whatever, not going to challenge their business. So here's what we do now. Somehow we take the dental floss and we combine it with the, I think the polishing cloth, I think, the microfiber polishing cloth, and we make a, a swimsuit of sorts, but I can never remember how to do it. Do you just combine them? You deftly yes. attach the dental floss to the sunglasses polishing cloth to form a rather small European-style swimsuit. Sounds good to me. Let's wear our bikinis, babe. Let's hop into the European changing bushes. I got points for that. Or maybe we're still getting points for making the underwear. I don't know. But here we go. Try placing the swimsuit on yourself. Well, I can't instead see of throwing myself. It about the pool. Don't judge me, Neil. I can't see. There we go. And Billy D is still staring at me expectantly. Stop looking at me. I'm changing. There we go. What do you think about my swimsuit now, sucker? Jealous? Um, I notice people are getting something from you. Uh, what is it? Um, are they? May I get something too? What are you talking about? Sir. Besides the important job of guarding the lives here at the pool. And a great job you're I'm doing, by the way. I'm also responsible for maintaining strict security over our combination high diving tower and bungee jumping platform. The gate to the tower, which you may have noticed over there, 
Well, it's kept securely locked at all times. Uh, no one, and I mean absolutely no one, is allowed admittance without proving their qualifications to yours truly. Guest safety is our first concern here at La Costa Lada. We can't afford to have any of our paying customers injured in any way. You understand? Oh, I'm not a paying customer. I'm here on a freebie. Oh, well, here you go, pal. Oh, neat. Oh, now I have three keys. That's not confusing at all. So now I can go to the high dive platform if I really want to and go bungee jumping? Amazing. Let's do it. Saving. Up we go. This will take a little while. How high could it possibly be? Oh, God. I'm getting vertigo just looking at this. Either that's La Costalata's swimming pool 100 feet below you, or there's a small blue kidney bean with ants all over it, hovering just past the end of the platform. This is insanity. Oh, my God. So, all right, let's get the lay of the land here. Let's see if it's true. So there's the European changing bushes here. All right, I'd imagine. Yeah, uh, yeah, then the lifeguard would be here, but I don't see him. There's the rest of the hotel, and then down here under this tree is the employees only area. So you go down there, and there's the gate, then you go on in there. Okay, well, that makes sense. I don't even know why I wasted time with that. Looks like the ladder goes further up, but, uh... You're standing on a large concrete platform, hundreds of feet above water level, looking down at what you once thought was a rather large swimming pool. I wonder what else I can do up here. Oh, God, looking down at those buildings is making you nauseous. Nauseated. Oh, God. Oh, God, look. <laughs> Neil, don't give us that opportunity. Oh, God. Oh, oh, go oh God. God. Oh, God, this is going to hurt. I'm going to die, aren't I? Go for it, Larry. No fear. Oh, God. I'm going to go right through the bottom of this thing. Uh, I look like a bowling pin with a hair at the bottom. I just belly flop into the pool at 500 feet. I'm dead, aren't I? Nope, I'm alive. That really hurt. I'm alive. Surprise! Where did you come from? Well, as long as I'm swimming around, look. If you were to belly flop at that height, you, you, you would be dead. You're dead. Oh, there's the window to the bar. A large window in the side of the swimming pool allows the patrons of the blues bar downstairs to enjoy looking up at the swimmers' nearly naked bodies. It's cheaper than hiring dancers. Hmm. All right. Well, good business practice there. I admire that. What's this little bar? From here in the water, you notice everyone sitting around the bar is riding an inflatable device. Well, screw those rubes. I do what I want. Unfortunately, guests are only allowed to drink at the pool's floating bar if they have an adequate approved flotation device. All right, fine. No, your gut doesn't qualify. All right, no problem. I have a gigantic inflatable beaver. There we go, paddling around happily. Hump that beaver, Larry. Your, your, your grace and majesty, Larry, is impeccable. A man floats beside the pool bar. He's sitting on something, but you can't tell quite what. It's an inflatable Sylvester cat. You you can tell that maybe, well, for copyright reasons. I don't know. A woman floats beside the pool bar. She appears to be sitting on a large green cylindrical pool float. That's a cucumber. We know that. It matches your bathing suit. Nice. There we go. And I believe that's our Kenny for the game. Well done. All right. Well, let's we'll talk to her in a second because she's the important one. It's like, don't look at me like that. I'm sorry. All right. Hey, Kenny. A male customer sits at the other side of the bar, riding an inflatable pussy, quietly drinking by himself. He seems to be no match for you in your quest to finally net yourself a catch like that babe on the cucumber. Hmm. A little competition again, eh? So, how do you order a drink here, stranger? Flap your tail, I guess. Hey, hey but more importantly, <laughs> have you heard the one about her? <laughs> oh, no, Kenny. No, no, oh, no, no, no jokes. It's you again. I remember you from Lefty's Bar in the land of the lounge lizards. And the dog says, I never had $5 before. <laughs> I never had $5 before. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs>
I wonder if these are punchlines to actual jokes. You're speaking in tongues, man. Well, we can save the woman, but I'm afraid it's too late for the rabbi. <laughs> this guy. Oh, my God. He's speaking in Simlish. Well, who do you think I am? The governor of Arkansas? <laughs> I I want to go have drinks with this guy. Uh, he seems like a lot of fun, but uh, okay, it's not who we're here to see. Hello, stranger lady on a pickle. This woman is so beautiful, you nearly swoon and slip off your beaver. Try to control yourself, Larry. You decide to order a drink. Did that do anything? Oh, yes, hi. sir. You slapped. I did indeed. Yes, I'd like to order a drink for myself and the uh, <coughs> beautiful young lady floating beside me. Very good, sir. Do you have any identification? What, in my thong? Uh, oh, uh, I got Cav's ID card. I got my room key. How's that? How am I carrying around all this stuff in my thong? Ah, yes, sir. What would you like? I'd like a tequila sunrise, and uh, how about a King Alphonse for the lady? Let her, let her make her own decisions. I'm sorry, sir. This is a health spa. We only have healthful drinks here. Instead of that poison you ordered, I'll bring you something better. A seaweed sunrise, and um, a King Alfalfa for the lady. Seaweed? Ugh. Um, how about a frozen daiquiri? Frozen daiquiri? Oh, you mean a frozen broccoli. Coming right up. Crap. Actually, that doesn't sound so bad. All right, well, thank you. No tip for you, though. I wanted my tequila sunrise, jerk. That was fast. Here you are, sir. That will be $50. Whoa. Charge like it to the room. I care. As long as you charge it to my room. Here you go, babe. Enjoy your drink. Yes, enjoy your obligation. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, these drinks are watered down. What did you expect? I have to carry them underwater. A cover for the drinks is all you need. It's such a good idea. Just just put it under like, you know, have the bartender put it into like this little dome. All right, you go get it, you swim on up, and then you take it out of the dome, and then there you go, no pro problems. But, again, for the sake of humor, proper business etiquette and acumen are just tossed out the goddamn window. What's the sign say? The sign above the bar reads, Bar. So much for your sleuthing skills. Well, seeing how it's faced the other way, and I can't read it from this side, I think my sleuthing skills are just fine, sucker. A cash register sits totally unused at the rear of the bar. I couldn't help but notice you hanging out here at the pool bar. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> Laughter? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, I'm Marilee. Oh my god, she sounds exactly like Amethyst from Steven Universe. And, uh, might I suggest a size up from that, but... Actually, no. No, I'm probably not gonna suggest a size up from that. Look at those arms. Her arms look freckalicious. Freckalicious, baby. Right arm. Merrily Lowe is the perfect woman for you, Larry. She makes up in the body department for what she lacks in brains. What? You haven't even talked to her yet, you jerk. Well, I guess we'll fix that now. Is your drink okay, Mayor? Oh, sure. Good enough. I'm not picky. I just try to stay happy all the time. Good. That's a good attitude. Good for you, Mayor. You certainly have a beautiful smile, Mayor. You must be enjoying yourself immensely. Oh no, I'm miserable actually. In fact, I'm more than just a little pissed off at La Costalada's silly management and their strict adherence to local laws. Why, Mayor, whatever is the matter? Is there anything I can do? Oh, Larry, you're so sweet to be concerned about little me. But really, there's nothing you can do. This monkey I've got to carry on my own back. No one can break an addiction for you. I must handle it by myself. Okay, we'll continue this conversation in just a second, but seeing as my and probably a lot of your eyes are sort of glued to the lower third of this screen, might I point out there's... I, 
I can't. But her her nipples are like way up here. That's not where they go. I that usually that's not natural unless she had some sort of like botched enhancement surgery. You know they should be like here. The same thing happened on Cav. Uh, Cav shirt, by the way. Like when but when she had her shirt on, they were like in a normal position. But when they took off the shirt, they were like bang, like str like almost like at the top. They were like up here, and it's like that's that's no. Did you even look at a picture of a girl before you started your artistic? Never mind. Addiction? Local laws? Mayor, are you in some sort of trouble? Is it drugs? All right. Here's our chance to add some socially redeeming value to this little saga. Drugs? How gauche. It's nothing so mundane as that. No, it's worse. Far worse. Larry, I... I may as well be honest with you. I... I suffer from... From... Say it, Mayor. I, I'm here for you. I, I suffer from... B.A. B.A.? It's... B B B Bungie addiction! You're addicted to luggage tie-downs? No, silly. Bungee jumping. I want to do nothing in life but jump. Well, it started simply enough. A uh, first small hit at a friend's party, then cranes at local county fairs, later a few bridges here and there. But I got to the point where I had to have more, constantly more, higher, deeper, longer. I was going down 40 or 50 times a day. I graduated to balloons, but even that wasn't enough. But then, I heard about La Costa Lata. Here? This place? <laughs> get your head out of the bikinis, Larry, and take a look straight up. I don't get it. You should be overjoyed to have a setup like this. What's the problem? These provincial thinkers, that's what's wrong. They have some sort of stupid law that limits you to 10 jumps per day. I'm not sure, but uh, isn't there something in the Constitution about this? Yeah, in the part about the right to arm bears, I think. Oh, that there was. And do you know what's worse? Oh, let me click on you and then you'll tell me, I bet. You mean there's something worse than only getting to bungee jump ten times per day? Uh, what is it? Well, I... I've gotten to the point where I can only become sexually aroused if I'm high in the air, tied up with long rubber ropes. Mm hmm. A plan is emerging. I see. Oh, God. Can we just, just, if you're going to talk, just keep talking. Don't maybe keep clicking every two sentences. Oh, Larry, have you figured out a way for me to gain access to the bungee jumping tower yet? No, but I'm giving it lots of thought. Okay, now this I kind of sort of remember. Now we have the key, so we can get her up there like once, but then the guy's gonna want it back. So we need to make a copy of it. And then, so let's pick this up. And then the Mr. Narrator Man said, Soap is really good for making an impression. So that's what you do. Hey, you. What in the hell do you think you're doing with my key? Oh. Damn, he saw you. But it really is a good idea to make an impression of that key. If only there was some place nearby where Billy D couldn't see you do it. Oh, I know. We'll go as you f all. The, we'll go all the way up to the tower, and then he can't see me from up there, can you, sucker? I can't even see you from there. Now, of course, the second I hit the water, and the water gets all over my soap, it's going to wash the impression away. But it's the thought that counts, I guess. Good idea. That lifeguard will never notice you making an impression of his key in your bar of soap from this height. Now you know why they call this impressive soap. All right, there we go, and spoosh. There we go, what do I do with it? It's a good thing something around here knows how to leave a good impression. Ah, uh, ha, 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 ha. All right, um, do we fill it with something? Like, do we have to make a mold out of it? I don't think that's the way this works. Now you have a bar of impressed imported oat bran soap. Maybe I could just give her that? Because I can't imagine a place where I'd get molten metal. Let's see if she'll just take the impression. Allez! 
Oh, well, thanks anyway, Larry, but I don't know what I'd do with that. No, all right, I gotta figure out what to do with it. Uh, oh, wait, maybe I can... That's why I had that spare key. Maybe I can, like, file it down and this will be my guide? But that means I need a file or a like rasp or something. I know they have is a wrench. Where in the heck am I gonna get a rasp from? Oh, uh, a nail file, maybe. I don't know. We'll think about that. Bye, uh, Melody, Merrily. Is that what your name was? Probably. Here's your key back, Mr. D. Or may I call you Billy? Preferably. Don't call me. Oh, shot down again, Larry. All right, now where am I gonna find like a rasp or something? Uh, oh wait, I know what we can do while we're here. Uh, well first, let's get out of our bathing suit. I think we're done with that for the mo. You surreptitiously slide the dental floss out of your butt. Uh, that's what I meant to do, but that's cute. But now that Cab's gone, we do have access to a record player, which is sort of the jukebox of the, uh... Peering through Cab's... Which is sort of the jukebox of the game. Let's see, uh... So, we could probably listen to all of the song of... What's her face? Cell Block Love. Does it play the lyrics, or is this just the music? Probably just the music. No, I don't know. No, nope, there she is. All right, I was really curious about this, because apparently that little Spanish song has a name. Uh, a Night in Parlay. But I don't know what Parlay means. I looked it up, but apparently it's a town in California near Fresno, I guess. So it's another sort of California reference. Hardy har. Shock your booty. Now, in order to get the batteries. Oh, what does she need? Oh, she needed um, handcuffs. Oh, wait, did we get the handcuffs? No, 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 wait, no, in order to get the handcuffs, we need to do this. Okay, I, I remember this. And this is actually kind of a clever puzzle. I really appreciate this. You need the batteries, and I swear we'll get them for you. Don't sweat it. So, um, out in the, what was it, the, the guardhouse, he was watching videos of everything. And here's one of those video cameras, ba -bo -ba -bo, looking gingerly at the ficuses. Now, we can also move these uh, these particular plants. So now he has nothing to look at, sucker. Good lad, have fun staring at your image of concrete. I got points for that, but no, no, that's not the point. So he's looking through this camera. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the position of this camera. Now, it looks like it's pointed straight down, but now it kind of looks like it's down and then curves over this way. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. But that's another thing we could use the wrench for, I believe. And he's totally not watching me do this. There we go. Using the plumber's wrench, you loosen the large bolt holding the video camera in place. Then turn the camera so it's looking directly into the women's shower. Too bad you can't see the monitors now. At least you've given someone a good time. Oh, that's right. Retighten the bolts, Larry. You're such a good little boy. And know what, just for the sake of completion, let's, let's go and put the plants back. While you don't need to return the plants to where you found them, you feel sure your mother would be proud of you. There we are, good old Mama Laffer. Look how he lifts from his knees, it's almost like the animation was reversed. And I also think, yep, there it was, I was about to point it out and see if it happened, but yeah, if you get sprayed by the little dancing fountains while you're dressed, the animation's a little bit different, which is a nice touch, that's cute. So now, back at the guardhouse, things should be a little bit different. Yeah, there he goes. He's gonna watch that same woman showering perpetually for all eternity. So I think we can't, we can't take his gun, because he'll know that, but we can take his handcuffs. Daryl is too preoccupied to pay attention to you. Now's your chance, Larry. You can steal the place dry. Wait a minute. That's what you have been doing. See, the only thing that changed was this main screen here, but it looks like there's nudity on just about every single screen here. So why this is the one that kind of shifts the balance, I don't know, maybe just a little bit of change in his routine. Now, I'm not going to try and take the gun, but I can take his handcuffs if I'm ginger. Daryl is so absorbed in your new television spectacular, you are able to remove the handcuffs without his detection. I'm not going to push my luck, but what's in this little pouch over here? This is where Daryl keeps his stash. He's wearing his stash. Of Wayne Newton cassettes. Nope, no, it's okay. You can keep that one. Me and Wayne Newton just do not get along. All right, I'm gonna get out of here before he notices me. 
And now that we have the handcuffs... Hey, what the heck? Let's go ahead and get, uh... Oh, man. A Thunderbird! That's right. She needs some hardware. <laughs> Love it. But bring a little hardware with you. No problem, Thunderbird. I got your hardware right here. Extreme! Look what I brought you, Miss Thunderbird. A genuine pair of chrome-plated, serial-numbered, auto-latching, inexpensive resort cop handcuffs. I only hope you'll find them acceptable. Jeez, Taiwan again. You know how fast the chrome wears off these babies? Oh, well, at least you made the effort. Tell you what, I'll go back to my room and get dressed up. You stop by later. And don't take too long, either. You got it? Yes, ma'am. But I... Shut up! I'm out of here. I like her attitude. She's like, I'm doing what I'm doing. You can do whatever the hell you want. If you catch up to me, great. If not, you're too much of a baby to hang out with me in the first place. And don't be late. Well, no. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, uh, what room are you in? Yeah, Kaz says, figure it out, sucker. And actually, I don't really know. I think it's on the um, the west side of the hotel somewhere, but I can't remember which one. But I think the goal is you just knock on every single door until you find Thunderbird. I'm going to see if I can do it the first try. Let's see how much muscle memory I retain from when I played this game. All right. Don't think it's that one. I think it's it's probably this middle one. Let's try that. Woolard's World of Leather? I'll be right there. I think that's her. That sounds familiar. Oh, man, I'm good. Good ching First oh, try. It's you. I was, um, expecting someone else first. But don't worry. Uh, can you fit me into Thanks. your schedule ahead of time? I'm sorry to jump I'm ahead so in the queue. Happy to see you again. Is this your own custom room? What is this? How come my room doesn't look anything like this? And what is these uh, machines? Nice room, Thunderbird. Sort of. I've never seen a place quite yeah, like really this It's really nice before. if you like decorated an early crap. I bet I've got a lot of things here you've never seen before. Oh boy. <laughs> I've fixed you a drink. Help yourself. It's on the table. Alright. I am just going to follow orders here. Oh, it changes the portrait, too. That's so nice. I can tell how much you enjoy your gold chains. Yes, I, I do. Uh, to me, they're a sign of virility. Um... Whatever. Allow me to add a little ring around your collar. What? Uh, do I really need to wear this? <laughs> it feels like a dog collar. It is, my naughty little puppy. But it is a very nice collar for a very nice little dog. It is pretty nice. It's up there in my inventory. It's sparkling. What have you gotten yourself into this time, Larry? May I help you undress? Yes, please, but be gentle. Well, I... Uh... Oh, be gentle with me. Say, what the hell kind of date is this anyway? Oh, just roll with it, Laffer. You've had worse. Down on your hands and knees, dog. Oh, let's hope this carpet is soft. I'd chafe easy. Sit, boy. I... Sit up. Speak. Woof. Louder. I can't hear you. Woof. <laughs> well done. Yes, that's right. You're the puppy dog, and I'm the mommy dog. Well, you are quite the bitch. Ah, I'll stick it to her, even though you were just thinking it. There you go. Round and round we go. Where can I get one of those setups? That looks like a lot of fun to ride, except it's probably just hook up the baby to it or something. Let him run around in circles for a little bit. A few hours later. Yeah, sleep it off, Larry. Sleep you it off. You awaken from an especially bad nightmare with a start. So is that all you did? Just run around in circles like a dog for a few hours? No! What was wrong? Oh, thank heaven. It was only a dream. Oh, really? Then where did you get that dog collar? Oh, but as she said, it's a very nice dog collar. Uh, oh, I can't do anything while I'm sitting on the bed. Apparently. There we go. 
Thunderbird may have been sadistic, but at least she has a generous side. Your new dog collar came complete with a large diamond. Really? Well, thanks for that. I'll just be removing the diamond from that. Thank you. You carefully remove the large diamond and discard the stupid dog collar. Oh, it looks like there are other some small stones in there, but hey, diamond. Nice marquee cut, too. Hi. If you had a loop, you'd be able to judge it more accurately. But for right now, you'd call it approximately 2.38 carat VVS H-1. I looked it up because I'm just beyond curious about the diamond clarity and color. So VVS is near flawless and then H is at the near top of the colorless spectrum. So it's a darn near perfect hey, diamond. Hey, you out there. Stop checking yeah, me out. Yeah, you out there. I'm trying to grade my diamonds here I just got for free. Two point something carats. Yeah, from what I can look up, I mean, even in today's money, that's a good... I mean, depending on the cut, it's like a marquee cut. That's a good anywhere between like two to six thousand dollar diamond I'm carrying around in my pocket. And I'm going to give it away. But I'll probably give it away later because I think I've taken enough punishment for one part. And I just did about ten minutes worth of research on diamond cuts and clarity and pricing. So now, hey, if anybody needs some jewelry work done, give me a call. I can probably help you out. But until then, good night, Jelly Beans. Good night.